Morning crustaceans, action stations, crustaceans. Bit of a switch up on the decor. Still a work in progress though, no? Shot, shot, shot. Oh no, shots fired in the chat already. From our Wodgy, says I need to have a little moan. Saw someone with a Lobster Death Cult t-shirt at Blackout on Friday and my enthusiastic lobsters <laughs> shout wasn't returned back. Oh dear. Right, I want to name it as well. I've only sold about I don't know, 12 or 13 of them, so we can narrow it, start narrowing it down. You know what, actually, along with obviously raising footwear at raves, I think perhaps we could uh, perhaps we could start a trend of just screaming lobsters really, really loud during any breakdown. I think that might be a good, <laughs> that might be a good one to get going. I don't know if anyone used to listen to the Adam and Joe show, uh, the podcast that started on XFM and ended up on Six Music uh, for many years. Some of the best podcasts ever recorded, I might say. Uh, but they had a, a thing with a guy called Stephen, who uh, it was part of a segment they used to do where people would send in uh, stories about uh, things that they'd done as th- things that they'd done as children, particularly like artwork or um, I don't know if anyone out there ever 
uh, like published a magazine in their household as a child, maybe stretching to like one or two copies of it. I definitely did a few of those. But they had a story about a guy called uh, Stephen who uh, invented a superhero called Stephen. And whenever he was required, someone would shout, Stephen! <laughs> and he'd reply, just coming! Anyway, it started to become a thing that would get shouted out at certain gigs, Fleet Foxes gigs, uh, to the point where it actually started ruining Fleet Foxes gigs. But it was kind of a way that you would, uh, you could do it at festivals and stuff to see whether or not there were any Adam and Joe fans out there as a sort of call and response, just whenever there was a lull in the music. Someone would just say, Stephen! And then, like, someone from across the crowd would go, Just coming! <laughs> oh, those were the days. They truly were the days. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, six minutes past the top of the hour. Things are set up a little, a little different here. I'm back, sat closer to the record shelves. There are books on top. Uh, I think I need to um, get some of my... These are all a sort of rather really weird disparate collection of books here everything from the uh fistography um collection of tales of bloody fist records um to how to be a productivity ninja uh, a couple of my dad's books goldie's by bi- uh, autobiography uh, that joe from bowl cut has lent me that i haven't got round to reading good news Clayton's book is finally all printed up and ready to be posted out. Uh, He sent an email out, which even included a description of how the shipping would take place, which would be they would be individually packaged up, taken to the post office and posted. So that's good to know. Hopefully that will come later in the week. And I'm going to try and imbibe that as quickly as humanly possible and then get him up on the uh, try and get him on the show. I don't know what the success rate well, that's likely to be. Well, so we've got Electronics for Dummies. That's obviously never been read. Dimmy was saying that I could have her copy of uh, Marketing for Dummies that's uh, 15 years old. There's probably some gems in there now, seeing as the way stuff sort of comes back round and perhaps digital marketing is... Oh, it was digital marketing. Well, that's probably, Jesus, 15 years. I mean, be a lot of SEO, I would imagine. Very, very outdated SEO techniques. A lot of backlinking, I would imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, enough turp. Welcome to Coffee and Mames. Steady job and a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. If you're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slug. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you and if you don't play that out you actually fail the lobster hr has many of the top memes many of the top memes many of the top memes the lobster hr has many of the top memes and that is so true that it's almost unbelievable ladies and gentlemen welcome to threshold.fm welcome to coffee and memes welcome to planet mother loving earth back up in this bitch for another week back up in this surly cow back up in this bloody strumpet that we call reality this absolute slosh pot that we call real life is it the real life or is it just battersea i don't know snips does not know uh snips is uh he's been a bit cagey recently as there's rumors that um uh our friend the uh the isis bride who's just given birth has given birth to something with uh, red claws bit bit sort of snippy and uh, K- uh, Snips has been a bit bit cagey about all of that. I've de- I've long had concerns that Wesley Snips could be a member of the secret a secret sleeper cell of the ISIS. But well, we'll find out later in the week, won't we? We we're rapidly closing in on show number one hundred. This is number ninety seven, so one hundred will be on Thursday. A few little ideas of uh, you know things just sort of permeating through my mind tank to do uh, i do think it would be fun to uh, get some people get some listeners on skype perhaps uh, that could be could go one or two ways if you're dead keen for that if you're really dead keen to to come on um then i don't know get in touch you know send me a message i'm, I'm ever available right what have we got in the news lobsters uh, hundreds of witches uh, marks used to fend off evil spirits discovered in caves 
Uh, James Hockaday of the Metro Reports. Don't know what he's been doing lurking in caves, but we'll find that out. Elon Musk's open AI builds artificial intelligence so powerful it must be kept locked up for the good of humanity. Uh, Jasper Hamill there, rinsing it out with 231 shares. Good work, good work, mate. Uh, Russia set to disconnect the entire country from the internet. That sounds like a bit of a hoot. Uh, uh, oh, some poor lad. Video of poor lad on Valentine's Day, uh, running down the street in just his pants. Fortnite festival, shit. Uh, so people are demanding refunds. Experts were warned deadly zombie deer disease could spread to humans next. It could be the zombie apocalypse that we're all praying for. I hope it comes sooner rather than later. I hope it, become, I hope it comes before Brexit, because then... It, yeah, we well, we were headed into the Brexit apocalypse, but just at the last minute, we got pipped to the post by the zombie apocalypse. That'd be nice. I think it'd be a bit of fun. In terms of shoe throwing, doo -doo -doo, what have we got? Dungeon, audio and synergy, hot bit. Uh, new Alex Perez. I'm going to play another bit by Shine and Crock. We've played pretty much the entire EP, but not quite yet. Uh, human Nature, uh, Parox. Paroxys, paroxysm, paro, paroxy, paroxysm, par, par uh, make it hot by Gigante uh, and Rido, but no, no, just Gigant, Gigante and Rico Law, uh, Technomatic sometimes, and a few other bits and bobs, a few other odds and sods. What's going on? How's everyone doing? How are, are, are all the lobsters and everything? Everything going okay? Is it fine? Is it all okay? Let me know. Let me. I've got a dreadful hangover. I was in a boozer last night drinking booze. Me and the missus went to a boozer, drunk some booze. Drunk more booze, too much booze. It's, it's been a... Uh, it's been rough, man. I just... You know, please pity me. Please give me your sympathy. Please. Uh, give me your shirt off your back. Anyway, look, come on, let's get into the uh, bloody news. Right, what are these witches saying then? Hundreds of witches marks used to fend off evil spirits discovered in caves. Lobsters. Uh, the UK's largest collection of witches masks, uh, marks used to prevent evil spirits rising from the underworld have been discovered in caves at Limestone Gorge, experts say. Who are these witches? I bet they're bloody Instagram witches. I bet they've written like live, laugh, love or something. That's their new type witches, Instagram witches sigil. Hundreds of carvings have been found on walls and ceilings of the caves at Cresswell Crags on the, on the border between Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. The discovery was made by enthusiasts Hayley Clark and Ed Waters from the Subterranean Britannica group who noticed the rare marks on the walls during a cave tour. Expert says the numbers and variety of the marks found around the cave is unprecedented. The marks were previously thought to have been graffiti from some naughty boys uh, before the caves were shut off. Witches' marks uh, or apotropaic marks from the Greek word apotropine, meaning, meaning to turn away, are most commonly found in historic churches and houses near doorways, windows and fireplaces, to protect the inhabitants from the evil Jeff Bezos, who will try to get into your house to watch you taking a tod uh, any of, through any available hole. So do remember to lock your doors and windows at night to stop the evil Bezos from getting in. Uh, I don't know whether or not... Are they, like, are the Instagram witches, are they sort of updating their uh, all their sort of hexes and their protective marks and stuff to include cyber attacks? Because um, that's how the devil would get in nowadays, isn't it? He'd probably get in through your iPhone, like rather than through down your chimney. I would expect, because uh, I presume the devil sort of updated his tech down there. He's probably ahead of the curve. He's probably ahead of God in terms of updates in technology. I just, um, I imagine. I reckon God's a bit more old school. He's a bit more send down a lag. You know, he's a schneid, isn't he? I don't like him. Like, granted. He's been responsible for some good music, you know, some good tunes. He's got a dark sense of humour, which I like, but he's a schneid. He's not to be trusted. He's like these narc dogs. Um, right, okay, well, come on, let's... That's the, uh, among the most common of the double VV engra engravings, thought to reference Mary, Virgin of Virgins, she ain't no virgin, and PM, 
or Pace Maria, while other symbols are believed to be devices for capturing or trapping evil, including diagonal lines and boxes and mazes. Oh yeah, you know, if you're a demon coming up from the underworld and you come up through some cave or something and someone's drawn a little maze on the wall, like, oh, I better have a look. You know, you get, and you get stuck in it. <laughs> Mugs. Come on, if you're going to get stuck by some maze drawn on a wall by an Instagram witch, it's pathetic. Is that a maze or is it a hashtag? Pathetic. The marks appear to have been added over time and may indicate a need to strengthen the protection against the underworld spirits in response to unexpected sickness, death, or poor crops, experts say. I mean, is that something we need to look at now? Particularly pre-Brexit. I mean, should we... It's the last thing we need, isn't it? We crash out of the, out of the EU. Uh, crash out. Crash. Lots of crash out of the EU. Then, thus, leaving us more, you know, defenceless against demons rising up from the underworld. And then they'll come up, sour our crops. You know, all that sort of, you know, get, uh, sour our unvaccinated kids. You know, sour all our soy crops so all the male feminists will perish. Be a disaster. Until now, the largest known quantity of witches' marks found in UK caves were 57 in Somerset. But the number in Creswell Crags is far higher, with hundreds in one cave alone. Wow, those witches have really been busy. I guess they're back in olden times, like before Instagram, there was probably sort of less to do, wasn't there, for a witch? Just sort of going about your witchy business, you know, sticking a hex on something like, you know, souring a crop or whatever. Just of, you know, some people that you didn't like. But, you know, so you'd have a lot more time to go and sort of doodle on walls. Nowadays, they've all got, they're on the stories, aren't they? You know, content, content, content is king for the Instagram witch these days. They're less bothered about scrawling mess on the inside of a cave, ruining a perfectly good cave, quite frankly. Uh, there may even been uh, may even have been more in the past as the caves were evacuated by archaeologists, uh, uh, oh, excavated by archaeologists during the 19th century and widened in the process. Well, you've got to be careful, mate. If you're in there widening caves and you're taking off all the sort of gubbins all over the wall that's supposed to keep us safe, the devil's easily going to get in through there. Uh, Creswell Crags will be launching tours of the areas containing witches' marks for the first time in late February. It is the latest significant discovery at the caves, which provided shelter for Neanderthal and anatomically modern people uh, through a crucial period of human evolution between 1,000 and uh, oh sorry 130,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago maybe um it's a sort of early sort of early early man version of Bagley's or just going to just more cave raves I guess back in the day wasn't it you know you didn't you didn't have sort of your London super clubs no laser system I wonder what the security was like I wonder what the drugs were like probably a bit more oldie worldy drugs mushrooms and, and the likes Shit DJs, though. Really poor. Just no, no, like, not a lot of competition back then, really. So there's just no standard of mixing whatsoever. Just nightmarish. Nightmarish transitions, quite honestly. But, you know, what are you going to do? You didn't know any better. So nothing else to compare it to. You just got on with it. Right, look, come on, let's have this dungeon bit. Audio and synergy. Nice. Decided if Clayton won't come on the show, I'm going to do a critical deconstruction of the book. Oh, 
I might do a critical deconstruction of it through the lens of intersectional feminism. I think that would be nice. That's probably what he's after. See how problematic it is. That's Dungeon by Audio and Synergy. Woo! That'll be fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, right, look, Elion's been uh, been on. Elion Musk. Op- uh, e- 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 oh, man. Oh, just the one too many pints last night, I think. Just the one too many. That's too. A bit of a lightweight. <laughs> Elon Musk's open AI builds artificial intelligence so powerful it must be kept locked up for the good of humanity. Jasper Hamill uh, reports. Uh, Elon Musk's scientists have announced the creation of a terrifying artificial intelligence that's so that's so smart they refuse to release it to the public. What? This is a piss take. Like, I'm annoyed at the fact that A, we're not being allowed to eat the horse beans. Uh, B, not allowed to drink the red liquid from the cursed sarcophagus. C, not allowed to use Elon Musk's open AI that's so powerful it needs to be kept locked up for the good of humanity. I just, like, how are we going to live in the libertarian paradise of our dreams if we're not allowed to do anything? It's pathetic. Where, like, look. Look, these, my individual rights and liberties are being oppressed by the likes of Elion and whoever wouldn't let us drink the red liquid from the cursed sarcophagus. It's a disgrace. It's an outrage. It's appalling. OpenAI's GPT-2 
is designed to write just like a human and is an impressive leap forward capable of penning chillingly convincing text. It was trained by analysing 8 million web pages and is capable of writing large tracts based upon a prompt written by a real person. But the machine mind uh, will not be released in its fully fledged form because of the risk of it being used for malicious purposes, such as generating fake news, impersonating people online, or writing books about renegade hardware. Right, wow. Uh, Automating the production of spam or churning out abusive or fake content to post on social media. That sounds like all my favourite things to do. (sighs) Again, you're infringing. My, the rights that I demand for my libertarian paradise. Come on, that's all my favourite bits. Generating fake news, impersonating people online, automating the production of spam or churning out abusive uh, or fake content on social media. <laughs> Missed out doxing, but I guess we could make a bot for doxing as well. OpenAI wrote, Due to our concerns about malicious applications of the technology, we're not releasing the trained model. Um, it, has a sam- it has a sample here of what it's capable of. It's too long, really, to read out, but I could read a little bit of it. Uh, This prompt was written by a human, and then it has, uh, after 10 tries, the AI then wrote its own sort of collection of paragraphs. The human wrote, In a shocking finding, scientists discovered a herd of unicorns living in a remote, previously unexplored valley in the Andes Mountains. Even more surprising to the researchers was the fact that the unicorns spoke perfect spoke perfect English. A lot better, much more better at English than I do. Uh, the AI then wrote, The scientists named the population after their distinctive horn, Ovid's unicorn. These four-horned silver-white unicorns were previously unknown to science. Now, after almost two centuries, the mystery of what sparked this odd phenomenon is finally solved. Dr. Jorge Pérez, an evolutionary biologist from the University of La Paz, and several companions were exploring the Andes Mountains when they found a small valley with no other humans or animals. Pérez noticed that the valley was uh, valley had appeared to be in a natural fountain, surrounded by two peaks of rock and silver snow. Pérez and the others ventured into further into the valley. By the time we reached the top of one peak, the water looked blue with some crystals on top, said Pérez. Pérez and his friends were astonished to see the unicorn herd. These creatures could be seen from the air without having, too much to, without having to do too much to see them. Uh, they were so close they could touch their horns. This is pretty terrifying that this was written by a computer. It would be you could do some interesting stuff with this. Like, what if you fed in all of Lord of the Rings and then had it write another Lord of the Rings book? It pr- presumably, it could. Wonder whether or not it'd be any good. <sighs> Don't know. Maybe, could be. I mean, you could have you could feed in like all the works of Shakespeare and have it write a new Shakespeare play. I'll sort of do a remix on them. <laughs> be a bit fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe. No, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Lobsters. These AIs, you know these AIs, they're going to come over here and they're going to take the jobs of our decent, honest, God-fearing authors. Our decent, honest, God-fearing authors, they're just out, you know, putting pen to paper, getting it done, trying to make a living, trying to look after their families, trying to take some responsibility for their own lives. And these AIs coming over here from America or wherever they're from, from, I don't know, the internets, coming over here, aren't they, stealing the jobs of our... They're going to steal the jobs of our... Fucking hell. I bet you could get it to write lab Bible articles just like that. Easy. You probably just, you just, the only human prompt for it would just be like bollocks. You just write bollocks and it'll just churn out bloody endless lab Bible articles. I don't know if anyone saw in the Discord my uh, mate lad Bible sexist again hat. <laughs> I think that could be a good one. I want to go back to the golden days of lad Bible when it was all about wenches. <laughs> and, like, it was just it was absolute fucking sexist nonsense. Those were the glory days of lad Bible. Lobsters. Too much heat in one package. I, I don't know what to make of this whole uh, AI Elyon uh, nonsense. It would be... It's an, it's an interesting time because they're doing pretty well on also generating... A uh, fake speech or audio, fake audio of people speaking. You basically you could feed it in, like not even that much. Like I think you have to feed in like an hour and a half, say, of Barack Obama speaking, and you can have it. Then you can then type in text and have it speak in Barack Obama's voice in a way that's like almost completely indistinguishable to the human ear from the real Barack Obama. So that's a bit terrifying. I mean, maybe. Maybe I could just have it do the shows for me. Or maybe 
you know, I could just write in a list of like sex robot news, something about drugs, something about Elon Musk, uh, blah, blah, communism, vegans. And it would, could just churn out an entire coffee and meme show for me. And then me and Snips could just get on with our lives. Because that's the end game, presumably, isn't it? Finally getting the technology together that you could just do the show for me. You know, <laughs> I don't have to be embroiled in this more this mess of a uh, of a daily routine. No, I just never. They'll never they'll never take me alive. No way. I'm too big. I'm too strong. Too cruel. Uh, right. Okay. Come on. Look, that's enough of enough of Elyon for now. Anyway, uh, look. This is the other shine and crack bit off the critical EP. It's called "See It Our Way." It's nice. Someone bring me a coffee. Print Village, Peckham Rye, Unit 11. <sighs> so, side chaining in case you wondered. really nice. It's called See It Our Way by Shine and Crook.
Chris LD talking trash about dogs on acid in the chat. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> it may have been a shit cunt of a forum, but it was our shit cunt of a forum. <laughs> How dare you? Dimmy's going to tear you to shreds. Lord of mercy. Right, uh, hold on. That's not, that's not, we'll play that next. Um, what's, what's, what's going on? Um, uh, anyway. Oh, that's a quote from Clayton, is it? That shit cut off a forum. Oh, that word does sound like the sort of thing it's say. What is there? Was a video a while ago, Dillinger and Lemon D talking about tunes and discussing like modern drum and bass at the time being shit cunt music, something like that. Anyway, Christ. Enough uh, effing and jeffing for now, anyway. Russia set to disconnect the entire country from the internet for a laugh. Uh, Jeff Parsons of the Metro reports, reports, reports. Russia's had quite enough of gender warfare, memes, and baby shark. <laughs> it's a, it's quitting the internet. Well, sort of. In fact, the country is looking at powering down its entire internet infrastructure as a kind of doomsday test. Could it survive without the web? This is a little bit like a sort of giant version of like when you and your partner go out for dinner and you promise that no phones. Come on, let's have just a meal, but no phones. It's like that, but on a much bigger, like, all right, can we do the whole country with that? All right, let's have no no phones for a whole day. Like, we're going to take no phone Sunday or no no, sc- no screen Sunday, yeah? All right, well, can we do it, like, for a, for a week for the entire country? No internet, no internet, uh, no internet. We're doing no internet week, okay, guys? Uh, Putin says it's a good idea, so it must be. Jesus, what a hellish idea. We would, if we did that over here, the entire country would grind to the halt. I, I don't know um, I don't know what it's like behind the Iron Curtain. I imagine it's probably... Um, I, I don't know. Um, maybe that's, that is probably when you, they're going to try and usher in communism 2.0. Right, we're going to take the internet down. We're just doing it as a test. Probably It's probably just a test, just to see how we would fare in case another country hit us with some cyber attack that took down the internet. We're just gonna, so we're just going to take it down ourselves. It's like, yeah, you can't punch me in the face. I'm already doing it myself. And then once it's down, they'll be like, right, shit, okay, bring it, bring, bring in Lenin, Lenin 2.0. Let's 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 get let's take down the bourgeoisie. Uh, right, come on, what are they saying? Uh, could it survive without the web? There has not been there hasn't been a fixed date assigned to the power down yet, but the plan is for it to happen on the first of April. And no, it is not an April Fool's prank. The calls to increase uh, pressure on our country being made in the West oblige us to think about additional ways to protect Russia's sovereignty in cyberspace," uh, said Leonid Levin. Sounds worryingly like Lenin to me. Uh, The chairman of Russian Committee on the Information Technology last month. Russia's disconnect from the the World Wide Web is one possible scenario amid the escalation of international tensions. Last year, Russia brought in the Digital Economy National Programme, which aims to protect the country's online infrastructure, even if other countries were able to cut it off. Uh, The Russian site... Izvestia has reported that Russian officials want to at least want at least 95% of all internet traffic within the country to be routed locally by 2020. It's basically the Russian version of the Great Firewall of China. Huh. Nice one, Jeff. Pfft. Jeff Parsons. Uh, naturally, there are some that aren't too sure about this plan. According to Reuters, the Russian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs reckon it poses more of a risk to the function of the Russian internet uh, segment than alleged threats from foreign countries. I think it definitely sounds like the beginning of communism 2.0. And I, for one, welcome it. I think uh, we'll have it's worth having another try, isn't it? It's not worked so far, uh, but I think one more try. It's got to be worth it, hasn't it? Third time lucky or whatever. Why not? Come on. Come on, we've got to do it properly. Communist detective. Right, what else we got? Um, Fortnite, uh, yeah, depressing Fortnite live festival left children in tears and parents demanding refunds. Uh, God, it does look shit. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, get this up on the, uh, up on the screen. Looks pretty dry. Um, where are we? Okay. Families have hit out at video game festival with depressing attractions that left kids in tears and parents demanding refunds. <laughs> 
The two-day Fortnite Live event based on the online video game was billed as the event of the year for fans. Organisers' exciting events promise the ultimate Fortnite battle royale with crazy competitions, awesome activities, and much, much more this weekend. Wow, yeah, it looks pretty good. They've what they've parked. What is that? A tent or is that the back of a lorry? What the? It's just. It's great. Another attraction included on the itinerary uh, handed to families was the cave experience. <laughs> it just looks like a looks like a big shed that's coming on the back of a lorry. Uh, the two-day Fortnite live event based on the online video game was billed as event of the year. They've got a sort of little arch. They've got an archery range just in a field. It looks like a really rubbish county fair so far. Visitors of the festival in Norfolk, oh Norwich, Norfolk were charged up to 22 notes for a ticket and a further 20 notes for each wristband to take part in the attractions. But hundreds of fans are now believed to have asked for their money back after they were confronted with long queues and disappointing amusements. Uh, Justine Peterson, uh, 44, travelled 25 miles to the event with her husband Martin and their nine-year-old son Richard after paying around £40 for tickets. The mum from Bradwell, Norfolk, said, How are you? queued for like 45 fucking minutes and then late to get through the ratchy fucking gates and then join another bloody crew to get fucking response. How are you? It was fucking ratchy. Justine said, There was a climbing wall that I couldn't have fit about four fucking, four fucking chavvies on. That's <laughs> four fucking nippers on. The sort of thing you'd see at, like, a school fair or something, and I'd have near nothing against school fairs and that, like, it's a nice place to take your nippers down, get him a, get him a couple of bottles of blue drink. Uh, he looks, uh, it's kind of also got a bit of a refugee camp feel to it in a way. It's, uh, I've actually never played Fortnite, so I don't know whether or not it's accurate in terms of a Fortnite experience. Another attraction included an itinerary handed to her families uh, called the Cave Experience. Mum said it was some sort of truck with a tarpaulin on the side, <laughs> and they'd stuck a grey plastic slide on the back. It wasn't even slippery. Kids were using their arms to push themselves down it. In front of that, was there was a merchandise store. There were ba- merchandise store. There were baseball caps with cannabis leaf logos on them. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what? please think of the children. She added, We then went into the main building. There was a big inflatable llama with a crowd barrier around it, pushed against a wall. The main stage was there. We were meant to be having a dance competition, but it was tiny. Uh, Justine said there was also a dusty diner, uh, a location appearing in the game where players can collect resources. She said, It was two or three tables and a couple of ladies with tea urns. <laughs> Yeah, three or four cakes in front of them. Everything had a massive queue. There were thousands of people and only about six things to do. We left within an hour. Richard was miserable. He was really upset. I don't particularly like my son, Richard, but it's annoying to see him cry because he makes a terrible racket, particularly when we're trying to listen to coffee and memes. Uh, as a parent, it's quite hard to pick them up from that, so we're thinking of getting rid of the child altogether. There were children upset everywhere. <laughs> there was not a single person who seemed to be happy with what they saw. It was horrendous. Uh, since they were not taking any responsibility for it. It was just depressing, really. Well, it looks absolutely rubbish. Um, don't know, really, uh, I don't know what to say about this. It's, uh, can you blame it on Brexit? Can you blame it on Trump? Is there some way we can blame it on either of those two things? Can we blame it on the ISIS? Can, is, what can we do? Can we blame it on foreigners? What, how, how, how can we spin this? Can we blame it on the Tories? Can we blame it on all the years of austerity? Can we blame it on Wesley Snips? I don't know. I just don't know. Right, come on, let's play this Alex Pires bit.
I'm expecting Clayton's book to be a sort of drum and bass version of uh, Alan Partridge's Bouncing Back, with like all the chapters finishing with, needless to say, I had the last laugh. I hope so. by Alex Perez. Nice. good to me it's on i don't know it was alex perez and monty (laughs) lovely stuff penis injections could spell the end of premature ejaculation my boy dominic smithers reports oh dominic smithers when will we meet when will we walk hand in hand in the park voice of an angel me uh, a new injection could mean the end of premature ejaculation. According to new research, injecting uh, hyaluronic acid, which is usually found in moisturizers and lip fillers, could help men last longer in the sack. 30 men who were suffering with moderate to severe premature ejaculation had the substance injected directly into their peens, and it was found to increase their stamina by as much as three and a half times. Woo! Uh, according to reports... After a month-long trial, some of the men were able to last two minutes. <laughs> Bless them. Uh, whereas before, they were struggling to last 30 seconds. Dang. Um, high, uh, hyaluronic acid works by softening the tissue around the area, which helps to decrease the sensitivity in the peen and subsequently last longer. Uh, Dr. Mohammed uh, Rajeb from the Cairo University... 
uh, said the said in the International Journal of Impotence research, penis injection with the acid is safe and improves sexual satisfaction. According to the research carried out by the NHS, the average time for a man to orgasm uh, during sex is five and a half minutes, uh, though uh, there is clear variance. Oh, and now it's the exact same article as that one where they were talking about some sort of pill. It's literally copy and paste. Um, although there is no specific rule on how long sex should last, premature ejaculation, which is when it takes less than a minute to orgasm, has been linked to depression and stress. Smithers. I, honestly, I thought better of you, Smithers. Now that we're supposed to be pals, now that we're bros, we're buddies. I know. You know look, I know we've never spoken, but we're bros now, in my mind. I'm just a bit disappointed in you, Smithers, that you would just... You... You would just copy and paste your previous article just to pad this one out. Why? I mean, you haven't even put any additional ads in there. You've just put uh, some more stock images. Smithers. You've got two extra Twitter followers since the last time I checked. I'm appalled. Honestly, this is a disgrace. I, I am absolutely not in, not impressed. Anyway, mystery buyer splashes out thousands on sperm whale penis at auction. Now, there's a picture here, um, but I'm unsure as to whether or not that is really a sperm whale penis, and perhaps instead it's a giant carrot. Looks much more like a giant carrot, or a giant nip. A parsnip, that is. Uh, watching Antiques Roadshow, or Cash in the Attic, you could be forgiven for thinking that auctions were made up of either old vases or old clocks. Well, the out-of-the-ordinary auction has certainly bucked the trend. Uh, yet, despite... Yet, despite boasting all manner of weird and wonderful objects from around the globe, the most notable entry was a 1.67 metre long sperm whale peen which sold for 4,600 quid. Not bad, is it? Unsurprisingly, the bidder preferred to remain anonymous. Why? Why? I mean, that's something you should be wearing as a badge of honour, your giant sperm whale peen. That's just the tip of the iceberg, with a bunch of peculiar items selling for a combined total of £284,000. Another private buyer spent an incredible thirteen grand on a complete cave bear skeleton, an Ice Age mammal that died out about 27,000 years ago, uh, while yet another anonymous bidder splashed out twenty grand on an eight-foot polar bear. According to the spokesperson for the Sorders in Essex, uh, where the auction was being held, taxidermy, preserving of an animal's body by stuffing for the purpose of display or study, has undergone a collecting renaissance in the past decade. Oh, lovely stuff. They said, Taxi uh, taxidermy eccentricities are a particular buoyant niche. It, ap it appeals to both collectors and to interior designers looking to make bold interior statements. Hey, look at that polar bear. They're freaking enormous there was a shop in i don't know if it's still there in islington i think it's called get stuffed uh they've got no end of security out the front of that place it's like fort knox because presumably like animal rights lot not to smash it up but jesus i got a polar bear in that it is so big honestly it's just you just can't even imagine how big these motherfuckers are like it like on its hind legs as well they're about 10 feet tall, just absolutely terrifying. They've got a hippo's head in there as well, which is just like, you just you could climb into its mouth. It's unbelievably big. People don't realise how big these animals are. People just going around their business, their lives, getting on with their lives, doing work and stuff, and they don't even realise how enormous some of these animals out there are. People need to know about this stuff. People need to be aware. Listening to Joe Rogan, you'd get, you'd get some sort of idea of scale of bears and mooses and yaks and stuff like that, elk. But till you see one up close... Till you've been, till you've looked the devil in the eye, till you've looked the devil in his bum hole, right into his brown eye, you don't have any, don't have any idea how big these enormous animals are. <sighs> Jesus. Oh, that's enough about massive animals. Yeah. <sighs> Can't remember any of these animals' names. There's been too too many of them. They're all. I feel like they're all my children, but I can't remember their names. I remember Big Bopper the Whopper. Uh, Knickers. What was that? Uh, Mr. Flea with his big horse bean. I wonder if that... What do you think they've done with the horse bean? I, I would like to have it on a plinth. Just there. A 
plinth there with a glass dome over it. I think that would be a really lovely addition to the live stream. A nice, big horse bean. I mean, the OG horse bean. Mr. Flea's big old bean. <laughs> but no chance. I mean, I'll try, maybe I'll try and get in touch with uh, what's the name in Australia to see if they'll ship it over. I wonder what the shipping costs of horse beans are. It's worth finding out, though, isn't it? Right, let's play us out. Technomatic. It's on Shogun. It's called Sometimes. Oh, it's a lovely bit. Choice. Really choice. to be less hungover for tomorrow's show. I promise. Really nice. I'm into that. Sometimes by Technomatic. It's on Shogun. <laughs> it's out now. Listen, guys, it's 11 o'clock now. It's the end of the show. I've got a, got a lot more work to do on the studio. Behind the camera it is the most ungodly mess you have ever seen. But I'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. 
more coffee, more memes, more ridiculousness, more shoe throwers, more just more more help really to get you through to help you navigate this wild ride that we call reality. But before then, I must shout out the VIP list. A fine, fine bunch of humans that are helping keep this dream alive. Helping to keep me do this every morning. These are Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, uh, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, uh, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heichelbeck, uh, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartende, Lady Scriffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphreys, Shibby T, and Coco Shiva. Thank you so much for your patronage. If you want your name on that list, you can get it on there by going to threshold.fm slash support the station. Go to support the station, go to our Patreon page and support for $10 a month or more and be a wonderful human. You're all wonderful humans. All the listeners are wonderful humans. I'm still looking for an app developer, an iPhone and Android app developer to help work on the new Threshold app. Spoke to an agency this morning. They quoted me 18 grand. Uh, so I mean Jesus that app would have to be able to suck me off and slip me a digit for 18 grand like seriously it's like a three page app come on guys (laughs) it's ridiculous Um, so yeah an app that can play the stream can have an archive and can have a chat it's not too much to ask the chat can be an integration of discord they've got a decent API come on let's uh, let's be sensible here (laughs) let's be reasonable I'm a reasonable man if nothing but if nothing more, I'm a reasonable man. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Get in touch. Email me, will at threshold.fm, if you are a developer, and we'll talk. We'll, we'll open up lines of communication. We'll have a dialogue. We'll we'll have a chit chat. You know, we'll have a cuddle. I don't mind. I'll buy you lunch. Come on, let's do this. Look, I will see you all tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I love you all dearly. You mean the world to me. I appreciate the fuck out of you all. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.